Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're all having a wonderful time. Here a quick guide for the new updated Forge Weapon Forge Guard minion build in Last Epoch. And the Forge Guard is something that's been really underperforming for a long time, but with the latest release of the Cycle 2, Harboring of Ruin, I can confidently say that it's looking very promising both for damage and defense with the recent changes to the Forge Guard. It's still early though as it's still day one of the new cycle and uh, there might be some changes so do keep that in mind and do check out for some new updates to the build. We're starting off with a T for Yura here and the rest that you will see here is going to be from normal empowered monolith so around corruption 100 or so. So jumping right into it. We're going with the focus of minions here and it's with the forged weapons that we're going to get from using the forge strike scale. And this weapon scales from the one that you are using for your character. So for this setup we've been using a two handed weapon to be able to get as much flat damage as possible. Apathy's Maw is a perfect example for this as the bait is uh, quite high and we also get up to 120 extra flat void damage from this as well and I did get one with base crit as a linear potential as well here which is something that you really want to try to get to push out as much damage as possible and this means that the forged weapons will also get the base crit from this weapon as well making it really easy to scale crit overall. And there are a lot of other weapons that you can use before this, uh, like a Lucerne base that can have up to 10% melee crit strike chance as the weapon base. And then you can just add a normal T5 base crit on top of that, and that will give you a total of 19% right away there. And then you can just try to get some added flat damage for this as well, and it will be a great starter weapon. Or you could also go for an Odish Sword uh, and this base will give you up to 170% crit multi which is also a great choice if you manage to get the, the base crit and also some extra flat damage on it as well here. And uh, then we also have the new Black Blade of Chaos which I'm thinking is going to be the best in slot for this build actually. As not only it's a Odeshi base with the crit uh, multi here but we also get up to 56 flat extra lightning damage and void damage as well from this. And it's uh, going to be quite common with linear potential on it as well. So this is what I'm aiming for at least for the end game build. But at the same time it is a drop from the Harboring of Chaos, so who knows, it might take a while to get one. Phantom Grip is a new unique ring that works great for this setup. We get plus levels to minion skills and also to minion base crit, which I feel is uh, more than enough if you have a T6 crit on your weapon as I'm using right here. And uh, early on you might even go with uh, two of these rings to boost it up and uh, you can equip them quite early on at level 14. And you also get uh, up to 100% off the stats on your gloves to your forge weapon. Make it a great combo here that you can add even more critical strike chance, melee attack speed and also even some armor shred chance on the gloves here. And this will then apply to your minions as well. And for the amulet we're using a death rattle here. And this is going to be for the minion crit multiplier and also the minion base. Logan's Hunger is another option here as it's providing up to 3% of the minion base crit and uh, even providing plus 2 to minion fire skills and this will also apply to our minions and I've been going back and forth a bit with this but uh, I do think that the crit multi is the better option here and also the death rattle is a much more common to drop with legendary potential on it. Advent of the race is something that can be nice towards the end game to get the, the right stats on it as it's going to be random for everyone as it's a weaver's will unique. And if you manage to get the, like movement speed and maybe health on it I would recommend using it. There's a small chance to get the haste for 3 seconds when a nearby enemy die and you can also get up to 35% less damage over time taken when you have haste up and this can be really strong especially as the sentinel class have a lot of mitigation to damage over time and it's also something that we take advantage of with this build and I'll go over more about that in just a sec. But uh, our minions also get haste and friends for 3 seconds when we get haste which is giving them 30% movement speed and 20 attack speed here from these boots as well. 
And the last unique that we use is the code of Erase Sentinel. And we get up to 30% of armor mitigation applied to damage over time from this. And we have more of these modifiers like from our chest for example. We can get another 70% from the base. And then as an experimental mod on the gloves we can get up to 30% extra from that as well. Which is just crazy. Other than that we get plus 1 to Sentinel skill and some increase to armor and then as it's a weaver's will unique the stats here will be different for everyone but try to go for resist life or minion damage for example the forged weapon have a chance to spawn when we hit the enemy and even higher on elites if you do so with the forge strike and this is something that you want to spam early on to spawn out all of those minion 12 is going to be the max limit for this setup and we also have it set up with multi strike and uh, this is our filler skill and this also gives a small chance to spawn these forged weapons when we use the skill. We also get mana back and health when we use it by picking up uh, the time of faith from the sentinel passive tree which is quite strong. And we then combine this with healing hand and it's basically going to heal us each time we hit the enemy with multi strike or forge strike. Seal of Hope is another one that we use and this is for buffing ourselves and our minions. We get 6 flat fire damage and also 25% increased damage per sigil here. And we can have up to 5 of them with this setup and the mana cost from the skill is really nothing to worry about as we get so much back when we're using multi strike. Just use it from time to time to keep it up basically. We're also using Manifest Armor and it's uh, one of my favorite skills in the game and it's been for a long time. This basically takes stats from all of our gear pieces and will also take, same as the Forge weapon, it will scale from our equipped weapon and it will deal uh, quite nice damage and also have a chance to taunt enemies. So that's also help out time to time. If we take a look on some of the defense here as well, first of all we got so much armor by being the Forge Guard and this is going to be our main source of defense as it mitigates all damage except from damage over time. But as we went over before we do get mitigation for that as well from different pieces of gear and we also get some extra from Iron Attunement. Here we get 1% mitigation per 2 attunement and the best part is that our minions also scale from attunement providing damage and health to them. So it's a win-win there. Another attribute that we want is going to be strength and we get 4% armor from this as well. And you can also go and grab some vitality here instead if you are already close to your armor cap. Armor is something that's really easy to get as the sentinel which is a huge plus for us. Your base gear is going to be the biggest boost. Lionel Great Helm for 550 armor from the base. And with a good roll you can even get 85% reduced damage taken from crits as well here. Which is huge. Champion Regalia said body armor. We get 700 armor here and the damage over time mitigation here as well. And then we also have some great passives. Liquid Iron for even more, less damage to damage of time and this is going to be double if you use a potion recently. And we also get some extra less damage taken from uh, Walls of Solaris and even more from Armor Claude which do applies to nearby enemies. And some of the stats you really want to try to go for is going to be health, resist, attunement and then strength or vitality depending on your armor cap and then minion damage. And as mentioned at the start, your weapon you are using is going to be scaling all your damage basically. So focus on getting one with base crit and then flat damage and basically try and improve it from there. For the idols it's really easy for this one. All we really want is going to be as much health as we can here. And we can also use this to make our character resist cap as well. And for the blessing, starting with the black sun we're going with the void resistant here. And then with Reign of Dragon for the Necrotic Resist. On Ending the Storm we want to go for Health Regen. And then Age of Winter for the Increased Armor. And lastly Spirit of Fire is going to be for the Increased Minion Damage. And let's take another look on the skills that we're using here. Starting with the Multi Strike. And this is going to be as mentioned earlier a filler skill. And we also have a small chance of spawning our Forge Weapons. And Mud Strike is a melee attack that grants a stack of armament and if you hit at least one enemy and this will stack up and uh, each stack of armament cause an additional sword to strike a nearby enemy when you use Mud Strike basically. Forge Marjorie is the one that we want to pick to have a small chance to spawn our Forge weapons. 
We have aggressive cannons for one additional sword. And Doctrine of the Anvil for another stack. Relentless advice for some increase to attack speed. And Guarding Stance make it so you have additional armor and block effectiveness per stack of armament. And Force Strike is going to be uh, the skill that we want to use to also spawn the Force Weapon. And all this passive pickup here is going to be the one that scales with the Force Weapons as well. So we start to the right here, Force by Weapon. And this will add fire damage to the Force Weapons and also giving them the fire tag. Mass production makes it so we get a higher chance to summon the weapons. And also this will increase against bosses and rares quite a bit. Force Marsher makes it so we have a chance to get a great axe instead of the normal force weapon. Boosting some area of effect here and damage for the weapons. Well, force weapon increase the duration and also the max force weapon that we can have. Life Forge giving us attack speed and also to the force weapon here as well. Finish Solarum makes it so we now have no cola of the skill. Really important to pick up so we can spam it out right away. Heavy Strike for some additional damage multiplier here for the Forge weapons. And lastly, Engines of War make it so the hit that they do is bigger. Manifest Armor is another minion that we are using. And Stats Grants by Body Armor, Helm, Gloves, Boots also apply to this Manifest Armor. By picking up Titan Sword, Manifest Armor gain a sword which also scales with our equipped weapon. Force of Impact also makes it so it gets some extra melee physical damage per 10 armor on our chest. Whirlwind, so the Manifest Armor gets uh, like an extra ability, a spinning attack for some AoE. And then we have War Stomp, just make it so the Manifest Armor have a chance to taunt nearby enemies each second. Healing Hand basically heal us every time we hit an enemy with our melee attacks. And this is from Cleric Hammer. When you directly use a melee attack and hit at least one enemy, you have a chance to cast Healing Hand and it's going to be 100% of the time. And then we also have Ryan Claret and this is making the skill a travel skill so we can move around. Purity of Tough for some reduced to mana cost. And then also Blessed Parish for even more reduced to mana cost and also some increase to area. And this is going to make this skill cost no mana. We got the Prayer of Fallen for some increased healing effectiveness. Vow of Restoration giving us additional healing per second with the skill. And then also Urgent Healing for even more heal uh, from the Healing Hand. And Seal of Hope, the last skill, which is going to be the one that boosts ourselves and our minions. We get 3 additional fire damage from this skill by default here. And then by picking up the Cree of Flame we get additional 3 here per sigil. And permanent sigil will make Seal increase damage for you and allies. We're taking Polygram for one additional Sigil and also Tetragram for another one for a total of five. And here a quick preview of the passive skill tree. For more information about the build I do recommend to go and check out the Lost Epoch build planner. And to the top of the build planner you can also go to loot filters where you can find my ultimate loot filter and with a lot of options depending on how strict you want it to be. Link for this will be in the description. So what do you think about the new Forge Weapon Forge Guard Minion build? Have you tried it out before or tried another version of it? Feel free to tell me in the comments below. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And if you got any other questions, feel free to drop a comment and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. And with that said, see you in the next one. Bye!